and welcome to another booktube video from me lauren from lauren and the books look at that little robot just peeping across <laughs> Look at this guy. Um, I've got this top on. Depop, where do I get everything? Secondhand Joni. I love Joni. And to get secondhand Joni stuff is delightful. It's just so lovely. I love being back in long sleeves so much. Today I'm going to be talking about my things that I'm up to at the moment. This is my September at the moment video. At the moment videos are uh, videos where I talk about what's the last film I watched, TV program, podcast, etc, etc. It's just a way to get a few more things out there. Um, because not, it doesn't, just because I... My favourites videos, blah, 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 blah. my favourites videos are things where I mention my favourite things and just because something doesn't mean it wasn't my favourite doesn't mean it's not worth mentioning, etc. So we're going to talk about the, the last um, few bits that I've listened to, watched, etc. So the, the last film I watched was Mamma Mia 2. If you watch my uh, weekend uh, vlog, um, which I will link down below, if you watch that, um, you will know that Dave and I watched Mamma Mia 2 um, the weekend, just uh, last weekend, because this is going up on Sunday, um, last weekend, and uh, we thought it was crap. <laughs> We really didn't like it. I'm, David on um, on Saturday said, oh, I can't quite fancy watching a rom-com tonight. Would you like to? And I was like, oh, yeah, that's okay. Yeah, let's. I've been wanting to watch Mamma Mia 2 for ages. And um, we just both thought it was rubbish. Like, I quite liked Mamma Mia 1, or Mamma Mia, as it's called. Um, but for me, um, Mamma Mia 2, first of all, okay, there's going to be some spoilers about Mamma Mia 2 in here. Um, Meryl Streep's character did not need to be dead in that film. There was no sort of, like sadness associated with that um it, and like Cher's placement in it was just mad all the songs were like ABBA songs I'd never even heard of and not even like good songs it wasn't even like they were like oh that's an ABBA song I've never even heard of they were just not great songs um so yeah really disappointed we were both really really disappointed in it um I like the outfits, but that's literally probably the only good thing I can say about it. Sad. Uh, the last TV show I watched, David and I last night have watched the second episode of Celebrity MasterChef. Um, Celebrity MasterChef, MasterChef is a cooking program um, in the UK. It's like a cooking competition. It has like amateurs, it has professionals, and it also now has a celebrity edition of that, which I quite like watching because I'm quite okay. I'm quite good at cooking. I can follow a recipe. I could, I'm getting better at sort of like pulling stuff together myself. And when I watch Celebrity MasterChef, the challenges and things like that are all things that are well within my skill set. So I watch it thinking, I could do this. This is what I do, etc., etc. So David and I like watching it more than we like watching the other sort of versions of MasterChef anyway. Um, at the moment, so it's going through the first week of, of, of uh, getting down from six no, five candidates down to three, I think. Um, and some of the people, uh, Oti Mabuse, who I love, um, she's a uh, professional ballroom dancer from Strictly. Um, I thought she was really good at cooking. I've been completely misled because she's not. None of them, like last year when we were watching it, there was a lot of people who were quite good at cooking and you were like, oh, this is going to be a really tough final. Well, the first sort of, the, this week of people, none of them are good. Joey Essex is in it, who's a sort of reality TV star who's in The Only Way is Essex. He just has no clue. He literally has no clue what he's doing he's just he was like mashing potato he said i'm gonna put dill in it is that normal mm -hmm. <laughs> like he just has no idea um but david and i quite enjoy watching it for the very reason that we both feel like we could uh we could compete in some of the challenges that they show there uh the book that i'm reading as i have previously said in my um september tbr i'd planned to only have one book on the go at one time in september one book and one audio book and i've bloody managed it so for the first time in as long as I can remember, I've got one book on the go and one audiobook. The audiobook I've got on the go is The Silkworm uh, by Robert Galbraith. Um, this is J.K. Rowling's uh, nom de plume um, that she writes under. She writes her uh, crime under. This is the second novel in the Cormoran Strike series. Um, it follows Cormoran Strike, um, who is an ex-army officer, and his uh, business partner, um, Robin Ellicott, who, and they have a, um, a private investigator business uh, where they um, investigate crimes. And each book is a different case. Um, but as well as the cases, you're sort of finding out a lot more about Robin and about Strike um, and their sort of like relationship with one another. That's the real reason I watch it. I enjoy, read it. I enjoy the storylines and I enjoy the cases, um, but I'm there for the Robin and Strike stuff, really. Um, but yeah, the second book is has always been my least favourite of the four. I've only ever read it once. Um, the others I've revisited a few times. Um, but I am revisiting it via audiobook because the audiobook is done by Robert Glenister and he just does the most amazing job. Like, honestly, it's one of the best audiobooks, like, series that I've ever listened to. Um, and I really, really would recommend it. Uh, I, I re-listened, I re-read, as in re-listened to, to, um the first uh the first one because we were 
uh, talking about it in my book club um, and yeah it just made me want to go straight on to the next one which I have done um, and then a book I'm reading which I picked up last night and I'm gonna finish it today which is has not happened for a book this big as well this is a, The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo and um, it is a book told in verse um, which I really love and don't come across very often. Uh, the last time I've read a book uh, uh, like this was one by, um, oh my goodness me, what is her name? Sarah Crossan, um, which is about twins. Weirdly, this has got twins in as well. That's about conjoined twins. This is about co twins. Um, and I'm absolutely loving it. You follow Ziamara, um, who has a very complex relationship with um, uh, religion and um, her family. And um, she's just sort of, dis she's discovering boys for the first time. Um, she's also discovering that she is an amazing poet. And yeah, I'm really, really loving this. I It always absolutely amazing amazes me um how much feeling they're able to get through so within sort of like two so within one poem two poems three poems i had a full idea of the character of ziamara and i just feel like it's just amazing the one bit that I've, i thought this is a library book and i folded a little page over um, but i don't i don't regret folding it over because it draw if it draws anyone to this passage then delight for them so i love notebooks <laughs> and um, ziamara is just getting another notebook from her um from her brother from her twin brother for their birthday and um she's talking about uh, she's writing her poetry into it and she says late into the night i write and the pages of my notebook swell from all the words I've pressed onto them it almost feels like the more I bruise the page the quicker something inside me heals I just love it yeah I'm really really enjoying this I feel like it's gonna be a five star I'm super impressed really loving it uh, music that I've been listening to recently so um, I've been listening to the first Kate Nash album Kate Nash is a uh, UK pop star she's an actress now she's in glow um, and uh, amongst other things and um, when I was younger I loved Kate Nash I loved her um, and I loved listening to her album over and over again I knew every song word for word every single song had some sort of like special meaning to me whether it would be the way I felt about a boy or the way I felt about life or um, I just loved her style I just loved everything about her and um, recently I've been re-listening to that first album and it's amazing isn't it how you can um, you can listen to something that you haven't listened to and I haven't listened to it for years and I still know every single song and I know the order in which the songs go and yeah it's really taken me back to some of like the, the how the, what a sad little thing I was then <laughs> and um yeah I just uh yeah I've really been enjoying listening to it um I would recommend it I need to listen to some of her newer stuff as well I got her second album which I also loved um but after that I didn't really listen to any of her stuff so I need to listen to some of her newer stuff I also need to watch Glow I know I should watch it David keeps telling me how much I love it other people keep telling me how much I love it I need to watch it. I will watch it. I will. I promise. Uh, podcast. The last podcast I listened to. So I listened to four episodes of the same podcast because it's a, for some reason it's a new podcast and four episodes came out straight away. And that's the Kevin Clifton podcast. Now Kevin Clifton is <laughs> going to be talking about Strictly again. A, um, a dancer on um, Strictly Come Dancing. He's a professional ballroom and Latin dancer. And he's brought out a, uh, a podcast which is all about performing. Whether that be on the stage. Whether that be um, as a dancer, as an actor, as a singer. Um, as all of those three as um like in in um what it's like to perform um behind the camera in front of the camera etc um, and he has different guests that come on um every every episode as i said there's been four episodes the first episode was just him being interviewed by his mentor um i just thought it was really really interesting um podcast in hearing about what it's like to perform um and what it's like to have that as your job um and you hear a lot about kevin's thoughts and how how much he relies on the audience and then you'll hear about um his co-star in the musical that he's been on and how that actor actor doesn't even realize that the audience is there and it's just really interesting to hear different different people talk about their relate their relationship with performing um when i was younger i was really into sort of acting and singing and things like that and it was something that i don't fully think i allowed myself to believe that I could do um, and I feel like maybe in another life that that is a path that I would have gone down um, but yeah it's just very very interesting to hear about um, certain actors and, and uh, their lives and how they got their job and how they got into what they're doing and etc um, so yeah I've enjoyed I've listened to all four of those episodes I don't know if there's more in this series I don't know what the plan was was releasing four episodes um, but yeah I don't know if there's gonna be more coming out but very found it enjoyable um, online what I've been doing well I can't really go into much details about this but what I have been doing online is arranging stuff for David's birthday David's birthday is at the end of the month um so I've been doing a lot of sort of like looking into we always we don't make yeah I guess we do 
We make quite a big deal about birthdays, David and I, um, and we always end up taking uh, some the, the person whose birthday it is uh, for, for sort of like day of things that are on. Um, and I've been uh, looking at a few things to do and also presents for him, etc. So um, that is what I've been doing online. And then the last thing is what YouTube video have I been watching? And I feel like this is a channel that I've mentioned a lot on my channel recently um, because it's been cozy reading night, and I feel like I might have mentioned them in an at the moment video before as well. Um, but there is a channel called ASMR Rooms. Um, it is an amazing channel where they have. Um, um, like hour long videos of sort of soothing background music uh, and um, sound effects etc the ones I watch are the Harry Potter ones but there's a whole host of things on there there's Lord of the Rings there's um, sort of uh, um, other, what other ones did I see on there Oh, was there Game of Thrones ones on there? I mean, I watch it for the Harry Potter ones. Um, and she's just released a new one for Charm the Charms Classroom, which during the day is all sort of like sunlight. And it's also got a really gorgeous graphic in the background, which changes. Um, gorgeous graphic with like sunlight streaming through the windows and a feather just wafting down and then it turns to darkness and then there's rain and there's a crackling fire they are just so soothing to have in the background when you're reading going about your life etc um and yeah i really really recommend just going and checking them out i have mentioned them recently um so you may well be aware of them but the new the new um charms classroom i've very much been enjoying and dare i say in september but there are some hogwarts or christmas what christmas ones that i'm really looking forward to so those are the things that I'm up to at the moment. We'll be very interested to hear what you're reading, what you've been watching, your thoughts on TV, podcasts, etc, etc. Recommend things to me. Recommend things to one another. Let's all have a lovely time. Hope you're having a lovely weekend and I'll see you again soon for another booktube video. Goodbye!